Hello, uh, Toxic Libs. <laughs> Where are we? What are we talking about? Why are we here? We're here to talk about Toxic Libs. First of all, we should all just say thank you. I'm so glad I live in a world where Toxic Libs exist. Exists. It is an amazing suite of libraries for processing. And in fact, um, if you look uh, at Toxic Libs, which this is Toxic Libs sitting here in my libraries folder, you can see that it is a whole bunch of libraries packaged into one. Audio utilities, color utilities, data utilities, simulation utilities, core, core verlet physics, volume, there's tons of stuff in Toxic Libs. But we're, where we are here in this world that we live in and where we're talking to each other through this strange internet thing, um, we're here to talk about uh, physics engines and simulating physics. And so we're only going to look at, in this particular set of videos, which I think will be about four, we're going to look at the Verlet physics engine of toxic libs. So first of all, OK, so there's a whole bunch of questions that you're, you're probably asking yourself. I know I'm asking myself a lot of questions. Number one, what is Verlet physics, anyway? Number two, didn't we just spend all this time working out box 2D? Uh, and that's a physics engine. Why do I need another physics engine? So the truth of the matter is, I don't know if any of us needs any physics engines at all in our life. But since we're in a place where we've decided we do need them, we've really now come across kind of three choices. We had the, well, we don't need a physics engine. We're just going to use processing and p-vector and figure it all out ourselves. We had the, oh my god, I really need complex collisions. Now I'm going to look at box 2D. And now we have this third physics engine called toxic libs. Why would you need toxic libs over just with, <laughs> um, plain old p vector stuff we used to do over box 2D? So um, to start this discussion, I guess, <laughs> there's a lot I have to say about this, and I'm clearly not organized in my thoughts. But I made a short list of some of the features that you might want in a physics engine. And I want to at least start this discussion by thinking through what are these features and what's available in box 2D and what is not available in toxic libs. So let's make little columns here. This is our box 2D column, and this is our uh, toxic column. And let's put a check mark or an X depending on whether or not the library has that. So box 2D, clearly the reason we want box 2D, the reason we love box 2D is because it has collision geometry. Check. Toxic libs does not have collision geometry, although there are some tricky ways of getting about, around getting the feeling of collisions in a toxic libs uh, sketch. Sometimes we, want, might, we might want to generate a sketch that it has physics in it that's in 3D. Box 2D is only a 2D engine. We cannot do anything in 3D, but toxic libs we can do physics in both two dimensions or three dimensions. Um, one of the things we looked at a lot with our uh, earlier examples when we started the forces model is having a, what is an attractive force, what is a repulsive force. Those forces are not built into box 2 d but they are built into toxic libs. And one of the things that we're going to see that's really amazing about toxic libs is you can create a body in the toxic lib world and just say it's an attractive body. And everything is always just attracted to it. That's very different than calculating a force, looping through every object in the world, checking its distance against that, applying the force. Right? We did all of that manually in our earlier examples. Toxic libs just allows you to say that's attractive, that's repulsive, that's neither, et cetera, et cetera. Now, one of the things we started to see the value of in Box2D of having things that are connected with joints, right? What if we want two things to have a kind of springy connection? What if we linked a whole bunch of those together? We have this string or this blanket simulation. There are lots of things we can do by creating these systems of connected elements. Toxic libs, well, okay, so we can do both of these in Box2D and Toxic Libs, but this is what Toxic Libs is really awesome at. It has a whole set of spring classes with different constraints and different features that allow you to connect objects together, what we're going to call in toxic libs particles. And then there, we saw in box 2D that there's lots of other joints, revolute joint, mouse joint, gear joint, pulley joint, et cetera, et cetera. Those are in box 2D, but they are not in toxic libs. So really, um, I, I'm kind of missing another uh, thing here, though, which is a big open question. I mean, you might say, like, OK, well, the only things that toxic libs has that box 2D doesn't are this 3D physics and this attraction and repulsion. but one thing, people are applauding in the hallway for something, it's clearly not me. Um, one thing that I, um, I'm going to just write sort of ease of use, in parentheses, designed for processing. And in this case, 
I would give Box2D like a score on a 1 to 10 of like, a, I don't know, I don't want to be mean to Box2D. Let's give it a 6 and let's give Toxic Libs a 10. So Toxic Libs is just so easy to use in processing. It's made for processing. The world is pixels. It thinks of pixels. Up is up and down is down. Whereas Box2D, remember, we had all of those classes and converting and me, this, this coordinate system and that coordinate system. So one of the great things about Toxic Libs, we've been talking for five minutes already about it, is that it is going to be very easy for us to use. And it does springs oh, oh, oh so well. So if you're walking through life and you're asking yourself the question, I have a project and I want to make it. What should I use? Again, if you are really talking about collisions, you should probably use Box2D if you're in two dimensions. If you're talking about all sorts of stuff that's connected with springs and this networked mesh of a force directed graph, cool, this is connected to that and it's springy and pulley and pushy and I should, really, I should really edit this part, blah, 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 with my magical editing engine that makes all these videos better. Um, it also like, gets rid of the uh, imperfections on my face. Um, but uh, you should use Toxic Libs. So Toxic Libs is really great. What we're going to see, it's for particle simulations and particles that have connections as springs. What are some examples of this? This is what I really should be getting to. Let's think about, like, so what are some classic examples of things that you could see in the Toxic Libs Verlet physics engine? Here, uh, whoops. Um, so here is one that I think is a kind of classic example of a great use of Toxic Libs. I'll just zoom in on this a little bit. Um, that you can see here we have this mesh. What is that mesh? Each one of those points in this mesh is a particle. Each particle is connected to another particle with a spring in this grid-like pattern. And what happens there is we get this blanket. And I'm now adding a repulsive force, right? Which is built in. I can repel it with the mouse. And you can see, look at this, this kind of cloth. Imagine texturing images over that. Imagine allowing it to break apart. Imagine <laughs> All sorts of things you can do by creating these types of connected systems. Another great example of just seeing having this kind of attraction repulsion for free, this is one of the examples that comes with Toxic Libs, is you can see each one of these particles is, is I would say naturally, but is repelled by every other particle. And look what they're doing. They're kind of piling up on each other. And with this kind of simple repulsive behavior, if I add an attraction behavior in here, we can see we almost have this nice fluid-like simulation. And this is very little code, right? We could do this without Toxic Libs, but what Toxic Libs is is a nice place to say, I can initialize all of these objects. I can give them attraction. I can give them repulsion. I can give them spring connections. And then I can just let them go. And this, by the way, would work in 3D. And the other thing would work in 3D, too. So you can do all of this in 3D with 3D geometry, which is really very, very exciting. So the main thing we have to get to in this, these videos, which I'm going to start doing in the next one, is the details of how to actually use Toxic Libs. Um, I think there's one last point that maybe is worth making in this video that's now about eight minutes long. Hopefully, we can get this done before 10 minutes. Snappy. <laughs> Snappy. Um, is what the hell is this Verlet physics thing anyway? Like, why is it called Verlet physics? Deep breath. OK, so here's the thing. All along, in all of our examples, we have been doing something secretly. And we haven't bothered to say what we're doing. We've been doing something called Euler integration. All physics engines. I think. I think this is true. All, I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I'm going to say this is true. All physics engines need an integration method. What is an integration method, you say? Well, first of all, what is integration? OK. I think it has to do with something with calculus. OK, but there's also this thing called differentiation. Maybe you have saw this. Maybe someday in some part of your life or somewhere in the universe you took a calculus class and you saw something like dx over dt, right? The change in x over time. That's what velocity is, really, in our world, right? We have this idea of velocity, x, right? The change in xy over time. xy is our position. The change in xy over time is our velocity. Now, why did I bring this up? Because maybe dx over dt rings a bell as that's what differentiation is. Differentiation is Taking the derivative of position is velocity, the change in position over time. Taking the derivative of velocity is acceleration. That's dif differentiation. OK, <laughs> but why are we using integration? Well, 
<coughs> where does everything start in our physics engine? The very first thing we calculate is a force. With Newton's law, we know that that force, <laughs> I'm going to fit myself over here, that force goes into the acceleration. That acceleration modifies velocity, and velocity modifies position, and then we draw the object at that position on the screen. We're doing integration. Integration is the reverse of differentiation. We're starting with a force, and we want to know the object's new location, its new position. That is integration. Our method for integration is, coid, is it's called Euler. <laughs> it's fine. Sometimes there's just moments of awkwardness in these videos where I have to erase something or pause or get confused. And like we just have to live with that. It's just life. I can't help it. And uh, you know when we have the crowdsource edits, um, you won't have to listen to all this. OK. Um, Euler integration. What, uh, that's what we've been doing. Euler integration is saying location, add velocity, velocity, add acceleration. Perhaps in the other order. So, oh god, it was going so well. It's fine. Um, OK, so what's, what's interesting about this is that this is incredibly simple. We do this once per frame, show a frame of animation, do this integration, show another frame of animation, do this integration again, right? But this is totally not how the real world works, right? If I were to drop this eraser, it doesn't like disappear and reappear here, and a second later disappear and reappear here. It moves continuously through time and space. You know, that's what calculus is for, to figure out the mathematics of continuous time and space. We can just approximate it by saying there's a time, 1 30th of a second, we do it. But you have to realize that this is very inaccurate. So th other physics engines, um, Box2D uses something called simplex. Dick Euler integration. I <laughs> think you can look it up in the links below that I'll include. Um, there's also something called runge cut. There are lots of other methods for getting from acceleration, a force, to the object's new position. This was a very roundabout way, hopefully you started this video off several minutes ago, of saying that Verlet physics, Verlet physics is an implementation of Verlet integration. Verlet integration is another methodology. And what's really interesting about Verlet integration, I will definitely include a link to the sort of seminal paper on Verlet integration, which explains it in more detail, is that it is an integration method without velocity. Velocity does not exist. And if you think about it, do you really need velocity? If you know the object's previous location and its current location, you don't need to know its velocity because its velocity essentially can be extrapolated from the difference between where it is now and where it was previously. And so if you look at the Verlet integration methodology, um, the algorithm is you know, similar to what we're doing in our update method, but different in that it doesn't actually include velocity in the algorithm. It just uses the previous location and the current location. So you know, if you want like an advanced exercise, it's kind of go dive into toxic lib source, um, take a look at how it works and try to like write your own little Verlet physics engine kind of briefly. But the, the point is that um, we don't need to. We have toxic libs. And one of the things about Verlet physics, which is really terrific, it is, is very fast. And it is very well suited for these systems of particles that are connected with springs. So I, I, you know, this video w w is, it kind of went on for, uh, I think the important thing is to kind of get an overview of toxic libs. If you're still watching, I didn't really mention where you download it, but that, that should hopefully be obvious from various links. But I will just briefly show you that. Um, so you can get Toxic Libs from toxiclibs.org, which is the uh, website here. You just want to go to the download link. One thing I should mention, which is just kind of I'm doing my duty as a, as a servant of Processing 2.0, is that all libraries should really be installed through Sketch, Import Library, Add Library. See this? Sketch, import library, add library. And now you're going to see a list of all of these wonderful libraries that you can install in processing. However, Toxic Libs happens to be, at the moment, an exception to this because the library is, if you look on the download page, it's still from pre-2.0. It works in 2.0, but you will have to download it, extract it, and put it in your library's folder. And once you do that, you will see, there it is, Toxic Libs complete 2.0 in your library's folder. So, if you have trouble getting Toxic Libs downloaded and installed, send me an email, write a comment below, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll get it sorted out for you. So this, the, um, this video uh, is done. And in the next set of videos, we're actually going to look at the, the actual implementation of Toxic Libs. This was kind of practice for me. I guess I'm a little out of practice. I haven't actually made one of these in a couple of weeks. OK, goodbye. <laughs>